going on, doll fans? It is your boy Dylan, and uh, I'm here with you today because it is uh, this is week two of OTAs. I believe it's actually the second day of uh, week two. Um, but it doesn't look like the media and stuff is there every day. So, you know, when I got stuff to talk about, I'm going to bring it to you. So I got some stuff to give you. Uh, also, there are going to be some interviews at the end of this video. I have one uh, with Jakeem Grant and uh, Brian Flores spoke as well. Some others may pop up at some point. Uh, they tend to. So we'll see and I'll get those for you when they do. Uh, any Or if, you know, more uh, come from the next day of... Uh, of uh practice then i'll get those to you when they come out anyway so let's get into it and so there's a bunch of you know a ton of stuff and look there's some there's some uh it is you know just week two of ota so obviously we have to see how things play out over the summer um you know and you know getting into the fall obviously training camp we're still months away from you know regular season and then the preseason and then you know regular season so we're still a long ways to go but there are some uh really good and positive signs that hopefully if it obviously if it can continue on and carry through then it'll be good uh you know It'll be good signs for this team going forward and, um, you know, give us some some positive things to, to build on for the future. Uh, so first of all, uh, Rashad Jones is not present for today's o er, for was not present for today's OTAs. That's expected. Um, frankly, like I said, I don't care. Whatever. Uh, that's not a big deal to me. Uh, J wide rece receiver Jakeem Grant is participating in Miami Dolphins drills and looks pretty good. Still quick. So obviously he's, you know, going to need some time still to, uh, you know, work his way back up to full speed. You know, Albert Wilson's going to need time as well, especially because, you know, uh, Grant had a foot injury and Wilson had a hip injury. So, you know, they're going to need to get those guys, you know, worked back a little at a time. But they're, um, they should, you know, and Grant's on the field now. Wilson's not yet, but, you know, they should be hitting the field and stuff and getting ramped up at a good time over this off season as opposed to, you know, during the season and stuff. So hopefully they'll, uh, you know, you know, we can look forward to them being ready for, um, you know, preseason and then hopefully for sure regular season. Uh, let's see. Jakeem Grant is working and moving, but it doesn't seem like he has the same giddy up as the past. Takes a minute to coming or coming back from a foot injury. Yep, like I said, you know we got to give him some time. Very interesting to see Devonte Parker leading the receiver position drills. That's not normal. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff coming on uh, from t coming out from today about DVP. So look, man, I'm hoping he can finally blossom, and and you know we'll see. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick looks like he's lost half the cake weight. Birthdays must be done. Well, good for him. I mean, and look, I mean, whatever, man. If he could do something, I I still don't agree with the approach, and I, I'm never gonna because it, it it just to me it didn't make sense. You know, I would have kept Ryan Tannehill, and I would have gotten Will Greer in the in the third round, but. Look, man, you know, if he does some good things for us, he'll get the credit when he gets it. Uh, he, he's lost some of his cake weight, so good, you know. But, I mean, there's a lot of work to be done. And, and I'm not going to, you know, he, he is what he is, man. You know, I mean, he's tr he's been around so many teams and so on and so forth because, you know, he's not good enough. He's not consistent enough and whatever. And clearly he's not going to be our future. So it is what it is. You know, I, I think he is better, though, than Jay Cutler. So you know for what it for what it's worth um anyway dolphins coaches are really being positive with Devonte parker this is from omar kelly uh, so a lot of this stuff by the way is just from like tweets and stuff um but it, there's good information they clap it up whenever he does anything say nothing to anyone else clearly the staff is trying to build his confidence smart approach and they do you know in a lot of ways they do need to kind of treat him like you know a kid right um because uh, look i mean he's just he's a very quiet guy you know he's he was when he was in college you know he had built up that confidence and he balled out you know and then when he got here it was a lot different and then he got injured and stuff like that you know and and it it his confidence got shook and there were moments where he really shined and showed it but then he was super inconsistent and so on and so forth and so hopefully um you know 
Look, I, you know, I said in the offseason I would have, you know, kept somebody like Danny Amendola and let him go. But, you know, if, if he can put it together, then obviously I would rather have overall, I would rather have Devontae Parker than Danny Amendola. But if Devontae Parker can put it together, right? And so it looks like he's off to a good start. But he has had good off seasons in the past, the past couple years, in fact, and it hasn't worked out quite so well. So we'll see how that goes. And I'm definitely rooting for him. Like I said, right now, as it stands, the only jersey I have left really right at the moment that's relevant, and I'm actually wearing my uh, Jarvis Landry jersey. I don't know why. I should have wore his jersey since I'm talking about him a lot today. But the only relevant jersey I have right now is his. I'm going to get Xavier Howards in the in the white throwback. This shit's going to be nasty. And I've, I saw that some of the pictures. Real quick side note. I saw some of the pictures and stuff on Twitter. If you guys have seen it, it's wonderful. Uh, of like Jakeem Grant and I think Kenny Stills and, and Xavier Howard. Uh, well, Grant and... and um, Howard, they were in their uniforms. Stills, I just saw like pictures of, of the white Stills jersey. But anyway, they're dope. They are pretty sick. And um, so I'm going to be getting Howard uh, Howard's jersey in, in that. Uh, but anyway, um, the only one I have relevant is, is him. And he, like I said, in 2015, when we got him, he was the guy that I wanted at number one. We got him. I was super excited. And he hasn't panned out thus far. But right, he's right on the edge, man, of having, for me, because like I said, you know, draft picks, I think that they deserve at least their rookie contract to, to prove it. And he's, he's, he's on the edge. So this is, this literally is like his last chance. Anyway, uh, continuing from Omar Kelly, looks like Ryan Fitzpatrick is the starter again today. Not a thousand percent sure, but if so, that's not really surprising. Adam Beasley, Ryan Fitzpatrick again gets first snap to corroborate. Uh, Haya, ha, so they had Hialeah Senior High School at the practice today. As I've mentioned, they always have, you know, high schools come out to the practices, which is really cool. Devontae Parker caught a touchdown, climbing the wall to get a high pass over the cornerback. He stared him down afterwards. See, that's the kind of stuff that you want out of, out of, out of Devontae Parker. Look, if Devontae Parker, because look, Devontae Parker has the capability to be the kind of receiver that Xavier Howard is for, for or, or as a cornerback, right? He's got that ability. He's got that fucking big radius. He can gump, jump, gump. He can gump. <laughs> he can. Well, he can run, but he can jump um, and go get those contested 50-50 balls. And that's one of the reasons why we got him. That's one of the reasons why I loved him coming out of uh, college, out of uh, 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 God damn it, I can't remember where he's from. I'm totally blanking. Anyway, so but. Um, was it Alabama? Shit, I don't remember. Anyway, somebody please correct me on that. Anyway, though, um, I loved him coming out for those reasons. So stuff like that is what you really want to see. Uh, Adam Beasley, some excellent coverage by the Dolphins defensive backs in this red zone drill. Uh, the Dolphins now run from drill with coaches cheering them on. Used to be more... Uh, I don't know what he's talking about. Xavier Howard just slapped down a pass to Mike Kosicki. Jakeem Grant practicing punt returns. He's the kind of player who can single-handedly cause an upset or two to screw up those projections with Miami Dolphins underdogs in all 16 games. That is true. Uh, Jemias Pittman is working with the injured crew. Saw Raekwon McMillan and he didn't have any compression sleeves on. That's a good thing. Devontae Parker is having a nice practice. I'm not going to talk about Devontae Parker's killing the Miami Dolphins practice, but apparently you are. That was Joe Shad. Uh, you know, and so, you know, Omar Kelly, Armando Salguero, Joe Shad, um, Adam Beasley, just to give, you know, uh, credit and names to these, to these, you know, uh, quotes and stuff like that. Devontae Parker's having a good day in the red zone. He previously was so ineffective in the red zone. Uh, the last coaching staff stopped. Yeah, and that's a that's the thing. I mean, um, we have Gesicki, we have uh, uh, Devontae Parker, we have running backs and stuff. We do have a fullback now on the roster. I mean, so there are options and ways that we should be able to score, man. Look, look. I know I've been like you know super hard on on. Uh, Mostly Steven Ross because I, I I completely disagreed with the way he handled things, um you know and a lot of the decisions that made that they made. But 
there's a lot of potential too, right? So, you know, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not, you know, I feel pretty confident that my, my view is going to always remain the same in the sense that like, you know, I would have handled things differently and I would have, you know, whatever, um, especially with the draft, but, but at the same time, there are a lot of good things and a lot of good signs and a lot of potential. And so I, I really am hoping and rooting for them. And I hope that, you know, like I said, one of my biggest, one of my biggest things or one of my biggest concerns is that if things for some, because they do have a tremendous hill to climb to, to exceed expectations and then not just exceed expectations because expectations are not very high from almost anybody um, in national media, blah, 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 whatever. And, and that is what it is, right? But, but I'm saying like, and you know, when you just look at all the factors, you know, it adds up to a, a really, it's not insurmountable, but it really is, you know, a, a monumental uh, hurdle to overcome to be not just exceed expectations, but to be relevant and competitive, right? So, you know, they have a long way to go. And one of my biggest concerns is that if things falter at the beginning or do not go well, or even let's say, you know, he pulls an Adam Gase, I know people won't want to, you know, reference, hate me because I, I reference that. But if he pulls an Adam Gase and, and does make the playoffs in his first season, it would be a tremendous upset. But then if he ends up having a couple years, you know, that are down after that, then are they, you know, are the fan base and the ownership just going to like, you know, want to tuck tail and like, you know, then, uh, you know, jump ship again? Like, that's one of my concerns. So, there are a lot of good things going on and, and things to be hopeful about. So we gotta, we do have to like, see, and that's the thing is, is like, I think a lot of people misconstrued my criticisms for the things that they were doing as if, well, I know this to be a, a fact, um, because of the ridiculous retorts that people would give me anyway, but they would misconstrue my criticisms of what they were doing as if I'm not supporting them. I, I absolutely support them. I just would have done things very differently this off season, but again, Again, they do have the opportunity to prove me wrong. I hope they do. And I'll give them credit where it's deserved and earned. So uh, anyway, getting back to it. Jakeem Grant is working red zone drills and his speed made Xavier and Howard back off. Maybe he's back. I think he's going to need a little more time, but he's super quick. I mean, he was like a... So when he was coming out, I loved Jakeem Grant and I loved his pick. Um... And I've been rooting for him from the very beginning. And, and God damn it, I loved last year with him and Wilson, man. That shit was special. And hopefully our receiving core can be again. There's definitely a lot of potential there. Um, especially with those guys coming back. But I loved the things that he could do. And I felt super bad uh, when he had those struggles in the beginning of like dropping punts and stuff like that. Because I didn't want that to derail him. But he has such a tremendous work ethic that he came in and he overcome it and he started making serious impacts and I think he can still do that and but I think it is going to take him a little time to get back to full speed but when he was coming out you know I watched tons of his videos and stuff and there was one there was a video where he ran the 40 it wasn't an official one like it wasn't it wasn't official as in like at the combine or anything like that I think at the combine he ran like a, a 4-3 something or a 4-4 at the slowest but in this video, he ran a 4-1, a 4-1, and it was, either way, the dude's lightning fast, and so you don't want him to lose anything, but even if he did lose anything and doesn't get back up to his full, you know, speed, I mean, the dude's still super fucking quick, and so is Albert Wilson, but I'm pretty, they're still super young, and they have the best, you know, um, uh, you know, healthcare and, 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 um, you know, rehab facilities and so on and so forth, you know, the procedures and the, you know, I mean, they have the best of the best, so they're good to go. Um, you know, and it's not even a big deal. Um, so I'm pretty sure they're going to get back and they're going to be all right, but it is super exciting. So I hope that keeps going and I hope he does get back up to his full potential. Uh, Maurice Smith breaks up a possible red zone touchdown pass to Kenyon Drake. Durham Smythe with a nice touchdown catch of a back shoulder throw from Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick threads a touchdown pass to Kenny Stills that leads to the second set of push-ups for defenders. Uh, Josh Rosen, Preston Williams, toe tap back of the end zone, touchdown Dolphins. 
uh okay 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 right so like i'm saying there's definitely a lot of good stuff now again it has to it has to continue and it has to carry over right so how many times have we seen now this this is not any indication one way or the other but how many times have we seen you know from individual guys or as the team as a whole tremendous off season training camps and preseasons and then we get to the regular season like honestly last year last year it was it, it, it was like that and then we even started the first few games like that we were one of the few teams that was undefeated after the first like three or four weeks and why did it derail because of of injuries that was the big thing last year it was just injuries 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 and then everything else just start, started piling on and just we got completely you know off track and and whatever so you know anything and then the year before that it was anything and everything that you could think of right so you know i mean how many times have we seen that but there were still wonderful things going on in the off season and blah 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 right and, and everybody was hyping it up there's all this stuff now there are some differences to to be um to be very clear right so it seems uh it seems like there's a lot of good things going on with the offense right now so we'll see if that continues maybe the defense is just you know maybe they're just not you know whatever 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 it's just you know it's otas right so it's all speculation and we're really not going to get any serious answers until they start playing games against other people bottom line um, but anyway, there's a lot of good stuff. Jake Ruddock with the touchdown pass to Isaiah Ford. Defense back to doing push-ups. Xavier Howard kicks the football. And Kenny Stills makes sure he finishes his push-ups afterwards. <laughs> I See, I do love stuff like that, though. Like, I love... I love guys holding each other accountable. And I do love guys pushing each other, right? So, um... You know, hopefully if... Hopefully if you know brian flores and the staff that he's put together can instill that kind of culture then great right and and um you need to you need to if you're going to be successful i've said that consistently throughout so uh Devontae parker's having a good day mike Kosicki made a catch downfield in the middle uh of the field during 11 on 11s then the next rep he catches a wide open touchdown from ryan fitzpatrick we really need to see him step up uh, this year Jamal Wiltz with a nice break breakup of a pass to Isaiah Ford Wiltz is killing it today he's a cornerback I suppose uh, Dolphins cornerback Jamal Wiltz number 33 done a few good things in today's practice cornerback Montre Hardage intercepted Josh Rosen today it appears the entire Dolphins offense or defense does push-ups when someone on their unit airs that's good man you gotta you know accountability you, you want to harp on the details obviously but you know um every coaching staff does their own little things right so you know we'll see how effective it is uh but you know i mean adam gase did stuff like this you know he made guys do you know um crazy drills and like he made guys do uh you know whatever right all kinds of stuff um extra running and so on and so forth so they all do it they all do it but it's good and it, it is I, I'm all in favor for it. You know, it helps to build, you know, the culture and, you know, accountability and so on and so forth. And it's just fun, I think. Uh, Jakeem Grant muffed a short punt. He should have let, let go. Special teams coach got in that grill. No TNT wall run. I don't know what that means. Uh, Maurice... Uh, Maury Smith with another breakup of a possible touchdown pass to Kenyon Drake. Smith has a ton of breakups today. He's always practiced well going back to last year. Devontae Parker, Parker, another touchdown. Fitzpatrick on fire. Devontae Parker killing it today. Another time, this uh, another touchdown, this time in tough coverage. Devontae Parker with a red zone touchdown catch over Xavier Howard. Kenny Stills catches his such second touchdown this series. This one from Rosen. K Stills also practicing at an extremely high level. Uh, great over the shoulder deep throw from Fitzpatrick to Stills. Was thrown only where his wide receiver could catch it. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da. I mean, there's there's definitely oh kenny stills kenny stills had an interview i have one from him um christian wilkins doing extra work after practice raekwon mcmillan was doing side work doing rehab and stuff after uh because he's got some kind of injury we don't really know anything about at this moment um uh brian flores i think does touch on a little bit i didn't get to pay attention to the entire interview unfortunately had some things going on so i missed some stuff but uh you it'll be at the end of this along with kenny stills and jakeem grant so you'll be able to hear for yourselves what they had to say 
Uh, Rayquan McMillan is not practicing with an unknown injury, working with training trainer after practice, clearly rehabbing leg muscle issue of some sort, not serious. So he's probably just got some like stinger, maybe like a, hopefully, hopefully, you know, it's probably something like a hamstring or whatever, but hopefully it's nothing that's going to keep him out too long. Uh, if he misses the rest of OTAs, whatever, hopefully he should be back for uh, training camp. From Omar Kelly, top performers for week two of Dolphins OTA session, open to the media. One, cornerback Jamal Wiltz, interception and balled all day. Two, wide receiver Devontae Parker, effective in red zone. And three, tight end Mike Kosicki, touchdown during 11-on-11, active more than usual. So, uh, oh, also from Armando Silguero, chipper reporter asks center Daniel Kilgore about promising rookie guard Michael Dieter making an instant impact. And his response, this is, you know, so things like this, I think, are pretty telling and, and, and whatnot. So, and it says, it says, um, you know, a lot. He says, um, and I quote, uh, I mean, he's still a rookie, Kilgore says. Any rookie is a big question mark. I don't care if you're first overall or third round. And then Armando Salguero put hashtag reality check. So, let's keep it real right you know and and that's how this is right and that's a a big reason why i say like draft picks and whatever they need to be given their entire rookie contract to be properly evaluated that's why i don't think that's why Devonte parker's literally like on the very edge that's why like uh i don't think it's time yet that to um uh say for sure on like charles harris there's still time right but but um is he going to make an impact this year? Who knows? We'll see. Maybe not. Maybe he, maybe he, you know, is going to, and see, but, and, and that goes back to, again, one of my concerns and why I would have done things differently. I would have taken, you know, one of the top, again, I would have, I would have kept Ryan Tannehill, not gotten Ryan Fitzpatrick, not traded for Josh Rosen. I would have kept Ron Tannehill as my veteran guy because you're still paying him for this year. You'll clear off the books from next year and have a lot of money, but you're still paying him money this year. Um, you you know didn't really get hardly anything for him. Uh, then you bring in uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, pay him a, a fair amount of money. Then you trade away draft capital to get you know Josh Rosen. Blah 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 blah. I just would have done things differently. I would have kept Ryan Tannehill, and then I would have gotten. Um, uh Garrett Bradbury personally I would have taken Garrett Bradbury in the first round maybe they would have chose you know one of the top guards he's a Garrett Bradbury's a center maybe they would have took one of the top guards in the second round I would have come back and got a defensive lineman um instead of not instead of essentially Josh Rosen in the second round um and then I would have gotten Will Greer in the third round but that's just me um, so we'll see and that's and again so a lot of good things are happening right now with the offense but at the same time will that be able to hold up if the offensive line you know right because if you know if if Ryan Fitzpatrick or Josh Rosen is getting sacked or, or flushed out or whatever blah 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 before you know stills Grant Wilson Parker Gesicki Drake anybody can get open well, you know, and if and if running backs have nowhere to go, well, I mean, that completely and that's why and that's oftentimes why with us we've seen, you know, good off seasons with a lot of potential with for the offense um early on. Um and then why, you know, last year why we actually did have a lot of success early on in the season because we actually had a solid offensive line and things were able to actually move, but then when we didn't have that, things just completely went to shit. So I still have those concerns, man, but you know, we'll see we'll see what's what's going on. Also, another quick note from Matt and Fonte. I have heard that the Dolphins coaching staff is raving about Jerome Baker and how they will be able to use him. I love him too. And I think him and hopefully, you know, McMillan's thing is not serious, a minor uh soft tissue injury, get back for, for training camp. But I think him and Baker are gonna be a great duo back there. I think Kiko's still got a lot of, a lot left to give us. And I think that our linebacking group is actually looking pretty nice. I think our entire defense overall is looking pretty pretty solid. So I am I'm optimistic about that. Um they love his versatility and work ethic. I wouldn't be surprised if Baker leads the linebackers in snaps in 2019. Yeah, man, there is a lot, lot, lot going on. 
and um hey man you know we'll see how it shakes out i'm definitely um you know gonna be paying really close attention uh obviously over the course of uh this off season and i'm just gonna keep it real with you guys as always you know i'm gonna i'm gonna give you the facts i'm gonna give you the stories i'm gonna give you all this stuff i'm gonna and then i'm gonna give you my perspective and analysis and so that's how i'm gonna end it i hope you guys enjoy it enjoy my my perspective my analysis of things i hope you find it worthwhile i love doing this i love doing this for you guys and i love to continue to grow i'm working you know hard to to get things uh developed uh you know better bigger and better for you guys uh you know i'm working hard to to increase uh you know my production quality and all these things you know blah 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 so keep supporting i really appreciate it i can't do it without you guys obviously and the you know the the more we grow and the bigger that we grow together the more i'll be able to do for you guys and the better i'll be able to make it so continue doing that and if you guys like it make sure you hit the subscribe button make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts hit the like button as well i appreciate that um leave your questions comments and concerns down in the comment section i love interacting with you guys and of course as always make sure you follow me on twitter at dylan tartaro and with that i'm gonna send you off to these interviews i'll see y'all soon fins up Um, the pain level is, I, I actually don't have any pain. I'll say more of, you know, stiffness, uh, just getting warmed up. Uh, it takes a longer time to warm up than it normally did, but um, the pain level is it's all gone and just ready to get rolling. In the grand scheme of things, just being able to take part in any kind of like OTAs, how, how, how big is that for you? Man, it's, it's, it's very big. Um, just just with them, just allowing me to go out there and just do a couple plays a series just to get some trust in with the, with the quarterbacks and with the receivers and with the new coaches and just to show them that, you know, I'm still working up to, you know, to be that guy for you guys and just for, so you can trust me and also just being smart at the same time. How long does that transition process take, not only for you, but a lot of the receivers out there to learn a new quarterback, say Josh or Ryan? Um, it, it takes it. It takes a, a couple a couple weeks to you know just for the quarterbacks to get you know your speed, uh, how quick you are in and out of the cuts. But I feel like you know Fitz and uh, Rosen, you know I feel like those guys are getting a, a good beat on how how we break and how our movement is and just uh, getting a, a great development of all receivers and just you know playing to our favor. What goes into the push-ups that we saw? How does the unit know when it's their time to do that? Um. So. Uh, defense, I think they do push-ups every, uh, if we score in the red zone and, you know, because it's hard to stop teams in the red zone, um, but they do a push-up every single time. And usually uh, at the last play of the that uh, series, um, the winner does, uh, don't do push-ups, the loser does push-ups. So uh, just to get the competition level high and just, you know, just so where we can, you know, talk trash a little bit and just make people do push-ups and just give us that momentum. Notice you guys also have been running from drill to drill. Uh, how, how different is that? What do you think is the philosophy on that? Um, coach always hopped up. We're going to be the uh, most conditioned team in the league, and so and I feel like he's really pushing that. And and he got on to me one time and he was like, uh, "Jakeem, what are you doing? Are you walking?" I like, "No sir, no sir, I'm not walking." But uh, and I also I also look back at him and make sure he's not walking. He and then he, he gives me a little <laughs> chuckle. But I mean, like he said, he's going to keep pushing that. Uh, that we're going to be the well, the most conditioned team in the league, and I'm all for it. You know, it's hot out here, and 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 we get to play in our favor. You know, people got to come play down here, and what he's doing, uh, I love it. Last week, uh, Rosen joked he kind of stumbled into a wide receiver meeting. Does he ever, uh, or even Fitzpatrick, do they ever sit in on meetings with you guys, just trying to? You know, acclimate themselves to Miami, both being you guys. Um, yeah, they, 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 it's a couple times that they came in and just gave us pointers on what they think they we should do, and and just on checks and stuff that you know adjustments that they see on the field, and 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 I, I love when they come in there because we get to joke around with those guys, and also they they have a great sense of humor as well. Um, but when they come into the room, we just you know just like when the coach is talking, when they're talking, we just we're listening. Who's funny? Um, I would say I have to give it to Fitz, man. He's he's a veteran guy, got a lot of years behind his belt. I mean, he's been around, and he's just he's just a overall just you know goofball. And then when we get out here, it's time to be serious. He's serious, but man, he's he's a funny guy. Which quarterback do you like more? 
Um, I like them both equal. Um, I think both of those guys are, are, are great guys, De definitely uh, different uh, personality, but I, I love them both. From back in high school with Rosen to now, but have you, where have you seen any improvements that he's made in, in a short time? I mean, it's, I've just seen what I've seen here. And uh, we've been out here for a couple of days, and yeah. you know he's only been here for a couple of weeks. But um, he's a great player, like I said, and he's got a bright future. And so, you know, I look forward to getting out there and, and you know trying to make some plays for him. A lot of things are new on the team. Uh, the receiver room has a lot of familiar faces. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the competition in that? For us, uh, it's pushing each other every single day. Um, you know, a lot of people on the outside, and and even you know, some of us ourselves have know that we haven't played our best football yet. Uh, you know, being that we've had injuries, we've had guys, uh, you know, fighting through injuries and stuff. And so I, I believe personally that I haven't played my best football either. And so we're pushing each other every day. We've got little little goals. We've got big chips on our shoulders. And, uh, you know, we feel like we don't really get the, any respect, so we've got to go out there and earn it. This was, uh, and obviously we're not here for every OTA, but there was a lot of plays made out here mm -hmm. by the receivers. Is that typical? We um, come out here every day and try and do that, make plays. We're, we call ourselves playmakers, and we know that we've got you know a bunch of talent in our room, and we've got to prove that. We've got to go earn the respect of um, everyone and our teammates and the quarterback. And so um, we're just trying to be consistent. I can't tell you if that's every day or not, but we're happy with today. And then we we'll try and do the same thing when we're back out here on Thursday. Kenny, the there's a deal that we've seen where you guys score touchdown defense does push-ups. Yeah, it's just competition. competition. So every once in a while, coach will tell us, hey, this one's for push-ups, and uh, whoever wins, you know, doesn't have push-ups, whoever loses has them. We saw only one set of push-ups for you guys today. It's probably the goal, right? I guess. Or yeah. Less than one. Yeah, yeah. So in the red zone, uh, in the scoring zone, you know, it's a lot for the defense as far as communication. The same with the offense. And so, um, you know, we, we had our our day, but you know, they've the defense has been playing well these past couple of days too. Uh, he's dealing with a he's dealing with a, an injury, um, but he's you know Raekwon's one of our most diligent workers, so he's he's doing everything he can to get back, uh, and um, you know we expect to see him back you know fairly soon. Are you able to train more time injuries? Well, you know that injury report comes out in September, so <laughs> when that comes out, well, you'll get it then. Uh, you mean the injury report? Well, I mean, we'll, we'll see them out there. I mean, if they're not there now, we'll take a roll. I'm just curious if there's anyone that you mm. could share. Well, Raekwon won't be out there. Um, uh, Dwayne Allen won't be out there. Um, he's dealing with a little something. Um, a couple guys who are sick, so, but, you know, you guys will see him. Brian, can you tell me what you've seen? I, I know there's no pass with your guards, uh, specifically Jesse Davis, Chris Reed, and Mike and Dina. Uh Those three guys are, are really doing a, they're working hard. Um, you know, right now, you, you said it, there's no pads, so, but a lot of this is, um, you know, technique from a, and the basic shoulders over knees, knees over toes, good base. Uh, uh, you know, as far as our communication with our protections, you know, can't do a lot in a run game. Uh, but those guys are, uh, are working on those specific things. Uh, a lot of the things on the offensive line is about you know getting those five guys and uh, creating a cohesive group there. So um, you know, between you know our center guards, tackles, um, and the and the. the mixture of guys who are working together. I think kind of building that uh, camaraderie is, is definitely a big part of this, this, this phase. And among the guards, can you tell me how active, or how much they'll be pulling? I mean, just in general, average, less than average, more than average? Is there any gauge, anything, nothing? <laughs> uh, you know, we're gonna, yeah, you know. We may pull, we may not pull. You know, we may trap, we may not trap. You know, we'll see. What kind of athletes are you looking for at that position? I mean, do you want the big physical guys that can can drive block, or, or do you want the 
Halfman stick and turn the corner? Uh, I mean, I think you, you want guys who can do both, you know, in a perfect world. Um, but look, everybody's got a different skill set. Um, you know, some guys are bigger, more aggressive, you know, uh, more physical. Some guys are a little bit more nimble and can, uh, you know, get out to the perimeter. It just depends on, you know, the, the, the specific player. And then, you know, I think, you know, as coaches, we got to we got to do what they do best and try to fit their skill set with what we're doing offensively or defensively or in a kicking game. Uh, we saw uh, uh, an athletic player, um, someone who's uh, got some size, got some length, got some you know athletic ability. Um, you know, I thought he did you know fairly decent in the workout, and uh, we, we felt like he would he would uh, you know help our team. You know, that's a curious question, Omar. <laughs> Linebacker, defensive end, uh, I think, you know, we'll try to put him in positions to help our team. Uh, that may be some linebacker, that may be some DN. If we, you know, if, if, he, if, if we feel like he can cover, he'll cover, you know. If he can throw the football, you know, and then, you know, maybe we'll do something there too. With your bowl, your Brazilian defensive tackle, um, how is he getting acclimated to the routine of the NFL and these camps and, you know, watching film, correcting mistakes, all that kind of stuff? He's working extremely hard. Obviously, this is, uh, you know, very different than, 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 you know, football. He's, you know, obviously what, how we played in Brazil. And um, this is a, a young man who works extremely hard. Uh, football is important to him. Um, and he's working hard at the fundamental, the, the basic fundamentals and just, you know, overall defensive concepts, which, you know, are new to him uh, to, to some degree. Uh, but he's definitely, he, uh, you know, we've seen improvement over these last few weeks for sure. Is he able to learn, the, like you say, defense? Yeah, he works. Yeah, he's, he's definitely learning. Uh, and it's a, uh, it's a situation where um, it's almost like he learned something new every day. Um, and I think, you know, in, in, in some instances, the light bulb uh, goes off in a specific area. Not that he's got all the answers, but you know, oh, this is why we do that technique, or oh, that's why we do this drill. And you know, you like to see it's it's kind of refreshing, you know, as a coach to kind of see that progression. Last week, you mentioned maybe Fitzpatrick maybe playing some linebacker. How much did you get to yeah. see him uh, do that? How how is it taken to play that position? Um, again, you know, last week we just talked about Minka playing multiple positions. So he'll play corner, he'll play linebacker, he'll play free safety, he'll play strong safety, he'll play nickel. Um, you know, it'll be all over the place. So. You know, he, I think, uh, you know, in all of those, you know, those different roles, he's, I think he's done a, you know, a, a okay job um, of kind of learning all those positions. And, again, this is a work in progress for everyone, not just Minka. But, um, you know, we're asking a lot of guys to do a lot. So um, he kind of falls into that. And, you know, I think, I think he's working and he's getting better and he's improving. And, uh, you know, we still got a long way to go. Uh, I mean, Kenyon is, you know, obviously, a, you know, a, a good player. Uh, I think he's um, obviously athletic, uh, good hands, fast, um, elusive. Um, he's a good player. You know, I'm, I'm working with him has been good. Uh, we've, uh, he's got a lot of skill. Um, so we, we've, we've, and he's working hard and he's doing a lot of, a lot of the things we're asking him to do. So, again, still a work in progress, still very early. Uh, but you know, I'm uh, I'm happy with where he's at right now. But you know, there's still a long way to go. Um, I mean, I like our our, our backs. I do. Um, but again, it's so early, um, and without pads, without you know, you, you can't see him protect. You can't see him. You know, uh, you know, run with power. You can't, you know, see how elusive they are. I mean, you can see a little bit of it uh, without the pads on. But you know, there's you know, that position. There's there's so much uh, there's so much contact at that position um, that without the pads, you know, really what it's about is uh, different alignments, the pass game, uh, just kind of the understanding. Uh, oh, 
the uh, understanding of the of the protection system. Um, that kind of that kind of threw me off. I'm sorry. I'm not used to I'm not used to the phones going off in my meetings. <laughs> no fines. This is not this is not mandatory. There's no fines right now. You mentioned competition barriers. Yes. So, and we know about the quarterback competition. We got that. So, what are other places where there's competition that interests you? Every position. Um, left tackle, right tackle, left guard, right guard. You know, every position has competition. So, um, I think you can't, you know, we can't push our players to 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 that next level if they don't feel competition. That's just my opinion on on on, on competition. So, um, I think there's competition at every position, and um, and if the guys don't feel that way, then we're gonna try to make them feel that way one way or another. So that's that's my stance on it. Um, I think, you know, like I said, in order to raise the level of the group, you know, you need to create competition, and and you know, I think. I think the people, the, the guys who thrive with competition are the guys we're going to want on this football team. Brad, do you pay attention to some of these less than favorable predictions that are out there? And if so, do you return against any locker room products? You know, my, my focus is on today. You know, I'm not really worried about anything that's going on outside of, you know, our building. Uh, so my focus is on today. It's, it's on improving today. It's on, you know, helping these players succeed and get better and, 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 and try to make some type of impact on these guys. So, you know, I don't really, you know, listen to the rest of it, to be honest. Is there a type of skill set that you're looking for from a slot receiver with Danny Amendola gone? That position is kind of open. Most people are assuming that Albert Wilson will eventually evolve into that position. How do you determine who plays that spot, considering how important it has been to the offense you're coming to? Well, I think there's, you know, Obviously, being a defensive coach, I've seen a lot of different slot receivers. So, um, really, you want to put your best three, four, or five guys out on the field, and you know, really fit the fit what we do to those particular players. So, if you got a you know small guys who shifty and get open uh, in short areas, that's what you do. If you got a you know taller guy who gets open with you know uh, you know physicality and and uh, uh, maybe a little bit deeper down the field, that's what you do. So, um, I think. You know, we've got good competition at the receiver position, um, and we will, um, I'd like to think that we will, we'll, we'll kind of tailor what we do offensively to those, the, be, the, the best players. Brian, what have you seen out of Baker this summer, and how does his side-to-side -side quickness fit into some of the things you like to do with your linebackers? I think, again, I think, you know, Baker's really working hard. Uh, he's kind of, uh, uh, I, I, he's taking a little bit of a leadership in the role. I think he's taking a step in that direction. Um, he's uh, obviously smart. He's very athletic. Um, and again, his lateral quickness, uh, as you mentioned, is, 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 is good for the linebacker position. Um, I think you know, the, the challenge for him will be uh, you know, putting it together, everything together. Uh, and really, the challenge for all of our players is consistency. Uh, so. Um, that's the thing we harp on on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not just with Bake, but with everyone. Uh, and I think he's he's trying to do that, and um, uh, we're going to keep coaching him to try to be as consistent a player as possible. Are you seen a couple of times this morning where you kind of get a smile on your face with questions that we kind of sense or you're not going to answer? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I've answered them all. Come on, Hal, I've answered them all. <laughs> How much to divulge in this type of setting? That's what you're at. Okay. Well, I, you know, to me, I, this is you know, obviously uh, open forum, and uh, I, I like to, as much as, as possible, keep things in house, and you know, not give up as you know as, as much information, not give out a, a, you know, a lot of information, because other teams are watching. Um, and if I tell them if we're pulling. You know, we're going to pull all the guards or, you know, we're going to play mink at corner or we're going to play, you know, I think, you know, I, I, I try not to give out. Uh, I don't want to put our team at a disadvantage. Um, so, 
Uh, maybe maybe the smile gives it away. Maybe I need a little bit more of a poker face. <laughs> Brian, along those lines, since Hal opened the door, I, I didn't know if I was going to ask about this today. It's on my list, but mm. if, oh, if, along if, those if, lines, <laughs> <laughs> you got the time. You got the time. <laughs> um, if video got out of what you guys are doing today, could it help an opponent? Like, if it, for instance, let me put it another way: if you saw Jets or Bills video from what they're doing today, could it help you win in May? I mean, in September? Uh, probably not. Probably not. I mean, it's just, you know, at this time of year, yeah, it's really more fundament more fundamentals, more technique, more, uh, uh, you know, your basic, basic install. So, pro uh, you know, unlikely. Uh, but, you know, I obviously, you know, sometimes that stuff gets out. And, you know, I just try to be, uh, I'm conscious of, of, of our team and, and, and I don't want to put us ever, ever put our team at a disadvantage. So. When fans are able to videotape stuff during training camp, mm -hmm. would you or anybody on your staff watch stuff from a, you know, Bills practice or Jets practice or, nah, you just don't even waste your time? Nah, you don't waste your time with that. I, I mean, we, you, you've got, we've got plenty of other stuff going on, <laughs> a lot of other film to watch rather than watching somebody's uh, grainy uh, iPhone, you know, whatever, iPhone video of, uh, of so a practice play. your stuff is out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to happen. I think that's part of, you know, you know, we want our fans, you know, to come to practice, you know, when at, at, when the time comes for that and to enjoy that uh, that experience. So, you know, I realize that they're going to, you know, uh, film some of it or video some of it to have a memory. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's it, that's like that for every team in the league. So, I'm going to ask you about TNT. Last question, guys. <laughs> T takes no talent. What is what is the mindset behind that whole approach and the players going to touch the wall when I guess they make a mistake in practice? You know, it takes no talent. That's something I learned in high school. Um, something that, you know, uh, my high school coach harped on, you know, for us. And it was, it was something, you know, that was, you know, basically uh, uh, a mantra in our building, you know, in high school. So there's a lot of things that you can do. And I think there's a space in this game for, we're really a space and everything to do the things well that really don't take 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 no talent. So, uh, getting yourself in condition, and I tell my players this: I can go out there and get in condition if I just go out there and run every day. You know, I'm not going to do that. You know, not like they do, but um, but I, I I could do that. Any of us in here could do that. And that really takes no talent. It just takes hard work, effort. You could do you could too, Mondo. You could get out there and run every day, and I mean you'll get in good shape. That's just what it is. Um, um, but you know that's kind of that's kind of the, the the mindset behind it, and uh, there's some things that you can take care of that you know everybody talks about. You know, this guy's that talented, this guy's talented, that person's talented. You know, the talent on the team, and a lot of things in this game come down to you know focus, execution. Uh, you know, not making a dumb you know a, a, a bad penalty. Um, and really, that it, that's not a talent issue. It's a it's a focus issue. It's a it's a mindset issue. And we just try to you know put a we try to you know I try to and I, us as a staff we try to m make an emphasis of those specific things. The things that take no talent. Uh, I think those you know those are the details that help you win games. So. All right, guys, so you've reached the end of my video. Uh, you've reached the end of the interviews, and I hope you guys enjoy my video. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comment section. And as always, make sure you follow me on Twitter, at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up.